Welcome, fans, to a special edition of the Old School Shooters podcast. My name is Jack Kilby from Great North Wrestling, and today we have some very special UFC uh, mixed martial arts luminaries with us, Kamal Shalarus and Scott Dirty Dancer Dance. Before we uh, get to our special guests, I'm going to throw, as usual, to the King of Connecticut, who, despite the early hour in which we're recording this morning, is looking as dapper as usual and drinking coffee. Yeah, well, there's a reason for that, uh, Jack. First of all, good morning, gentlemen. I was uh, the first guest on Kamal and Scott's old show, Fighters Drinking Coffee, out of uh, their studio at uh, Nova MMA in Arlington, Virginia, which was a really, really great school, great location. And uh, I was a recurring guest. I came back at least twice maybe three times i remember once we recorded from fairlington which was wild because i had actually lived in fairlington uh complex many years ago prior to that when i first left connecticut and then i remember another time scott i think the last time i was staying at kamal's house and you and i recorded um from uh from the gym there <clears throat> yeah you're, you're saying a lot of old school words there, man. But yeah, cheers. Fire yeah, cheers, conference. guys. So, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, that yeah was you like, know what? What was that? I mean, that must have been five or six years ago. Yeah, man. I think I think it was like 2000 because I went back and looked in preparation for this episode and I found a cool picture of me, you, Kamal. And uh, Michael giving the four fingers, the four horsemen. And that was in Fairlington. And it said it was in 2016. So it was six years ago. Um, And, man, I've known Kamal a lot longer than that. And I want to talk about old school. Kamal is as old school as they come, brother. Such a great guy, you know, when it comes to the the way Kamal grew up. Um, in Iran, on the farm, as a night stalker, uh, guarding uh, the sheep from the wolves, ready to shoot the wolves, um, to his wrestling lineage in Iran. What a great wrestling lineage Iran has. And the way Kamal trains with the Persian clubs, everything about the Prince of Persia is old school. So Kamal, it's great to see you, brother. And we've we've been up and down the road together for so long for so many years, and got so many great stories to tell. And how you doing, brother? Uh, Matt, thanks for asking. I'm doing great, and uh, living in Washington D.C. area, Arlington, and training, working, doing the business, and life is fantastic and amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I am blessing. So God thanks. Everything's good, healthy, and Excellent. good life. And that's, you know, that's the thing about you, uh, Kamal. You've, you've always been a true gentleman. You've always been really wise with business and with investing. Uh, I know when I was uh, stayed up at your place, you have a beautiful, beautiful place there in Arlington uh, that your real estate business is is really booming. I tell the people a little about that, what you're doing now on the real estate side. Sure, yeah. So after my fighting career, uh, I start my new career and switch to development, so real estate. And I educate myself and start in flipping small single family home and take some courses, learn about the business, learn about the building, and more other stuff, investment. Now we are doing multi-unit single family mix and uh, the company getting bigger. And uh, each year, every day learning more. So yeah, this, we are doing good. And also- yeah, now, I, now I know Kamal, you, you were, I had moved to Florida and I, you know, I love it here in Florida, but Kamal and I, had so many great times as well in Kakalaki in Austin, Texas, <laughs> and in, the, in the North Kakalaki, in the South Kakalaki, in West Virginia, up there with Scott in, in Virginia. 
Uh, and uh, I know that you were going to be doing some real estate development. You were looking at some property in the Myrtle Beach area. Uh, Jack is actually coming down to me. Yeah, Jack actually has a condo, my co-host in Myrtle Beach. He lives in Canada, but he's one of those snowbirds. It's going to be coming down to uh, <laughs> to Myrtle. Um, so, Kamal, um, you were in Myrtle Beach just recently, right, in the last few months? Yes, uh, I was about like seven, eight months ago. We had this opportunity to build their 100 single family home and partner up with some of those golfers. They had a golf course. And it's still project going on, but we didn't sign any contract, just depending, depends on some of the permitting zoning we are waiting. So always we are open to partner with some other people if they have a land, if, if they have any opportunity and they call us, we get partners and develop. Yeah, that's great. You know, you've, you've developed your business so successfully over the years and you've been on the real estate side for some time now, but take you back to maybe uh, 2015 or so, uh, Great Falls, Virginia. What an awesome place, man. We had so much fun. And uh, we remember you, you took me to uh, that, that party, that beautiful estate that was, I mean, you, Jack, you feel like you're in Montana when you're in Great Falls. And then one of Kamal's business partners, we, we hop in the Maserati and we go to his bar right in D.C. to watch the fights. It's wild, the, the, the dichotomy between country and city there. And uh, Kamal's always been very, very dialed in. Uh, he's a man of great sophistication. That's why they call him the Prince of Persia. Remember at that party, it was before my hair had turned gray, <laughs> when I had the black hair and you told, uh, you told all the, the folks there that I was Persian. And, uh, remember that woman wanted me to fly me to Vegas to be her dancer for her bachelorette party. Yes, I do remember. <laughs> yes, I do remember. She was a beautiful lady and she, she loved you. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, Persian woman. They, they treat the Prince of Kaklaki very well. Um, so I told him, you are the Prince of Kaklaki. <laughs> That's right. We had, oh man, that was a great time. I'll tell you. Awesome. Um, awesome play, awesome time. And we've had so many good times. And I want to bring Scott in because Scott, you're, you and Kamal um, have another business now. You guys are, you guys are really the shining lights. You're really the, the prime example of, of successful businessmen in the, in the, in, in the combat sports world and tell everybody you, you guys kind of moved from Nova MMA over to you opened up your own gym, which I had the pleasure of, uh, of going to last year, um, was, uh, called district. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess our, our origin story, I'll work a couple things in here, Matt. So, um, and, and Jack, I bet you've probably heard this. Maybe, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. The listeners might find it interesting, but me and Kamal go back to a gym that, that the King of Connecticut's talking about called Nova MMA, which was located in Arlington, Virginia, where Kamal and I now operate District Martial Arts. That's what you were just talking about, Matt. Um, but I met. I met Kamal there. I was I was a student. I was a young purple belt. Kamal came in. Um, this was like clean shaven, clean cut, UFC, WEC, Kamal. Um, and I remember at the time, like, I remember thinking to myself, I thought I was pretty good at jujitsu. I was like, I'm yeah, pretty tough. I'm a purple belt. This is what purple belts think. Um, and uh, Kamal came in, smile on his face, athletic, pretty jacked. I was like, all right, this guy looks like he's pretty cool. Like, he knows what he's doing. Um, but I'll, I'll probably submit him. Anyways. He runs a good class. He's doing a pretty cool warm up. Kamal's famous for having like really athletic, like almost like gymnastics workout type warm ups. Pretty cool routine. Um, but we go to start rolling, and Kamal just starts blasting me, man, just like crushing me. Um, and then at the end of the round, he's like, "Good job, dude!" With a big smile on his face after he kicked my ass for like eight minutes straight. Um, at the end of class, he did compliment me and say that I looked like a smaller version of Tim Kennedy. One of his buddies from back in in Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate I, I, that. It was like a thanks, Kamal. 
it was like a, a soft landing after um you know giving me the business but um uh, based on your man, skill and talent i said that yeah thanks dude thanks dude um which was it must have been 2013 or 14 this is years ago but right. um Kamal and then uh, our two other business partners who uh who are here we all met at nova mma which um actually like in this area has like a pretty storied history um a, a lot of fighters in the dc area came up through the nova mma they were with team lloyd Irvin at the time who's produced a ton of jujitsu mma champions they, they separated well they separated at the time anyways suffice it to say we kind of we built our own little unit at nova mma also this is around the time that me michael sutherland and kamal started fighters drinking coffee that's where the king of connecticut works his way in there um how could we not have this silver-tongued gentleman on our uh on our cast but um we were recording our studio was in like a back room at nova mma that's what you were referring to matt i like that studio man it was kind of like it was real budget it was very like scrapped together but i i love that type of stuff um I remember we had like swords in the room and random trash. <laughs> we made some good podcasts there, man. Um, at one point in time, we had like a hot plate where we would make our fresh coffee that we would drink while we would hop on and talk about God knows what. Um, anyways, yeah, lots of like lots of adventures, but all roads kind of go through Nova MMA. Um, in 2017, the owner of Nova MMA announced that she was shutting down her operations and like. For, for a multitude of reasons, the main one being we didn't want to stop training. And me and Kamal and uh, Sam were already coaching at Nova MMA. One of our students, his name's Charles, um, you know, senior student, really, really skilled, really talented, sharp guy. Uh, we got the group together and said, hey, why don't the four of us, let's continue to cultivate this little team we've already more or less taken the reins of. Um, and do this on our own. So uh, we had a, like, a, kind of like a five or six month lead in time when we knew that our, like our home base, Nova was gonna close down uh, to hunt around Arlington, find a good location. And uh, we did that, God, it was between like January and August. We, we set up the LLC, put together all the operations, the funding, found, uh, you know, did like, a, a really fast and hard approach to, to finding good real estate, a good location, sign the lease and then moved in and um, pretty quickly grew the business um, to at least like a stable position. And then 2018, 2019 was a growth phase. Um, like we, we had a good product and we knew that people wanted to train. We, we, we already had a community and a team. And I think that comes from the four of us, Sam, Kamal, myself, and Charles. Um, and we can like w the four of us, you know, obviously we, you know, Kamal, Charles, Roos, like you said, Matt, like his background, like we have so much knowledge amongst the four of us. There's, there's plenty of content. Um, so I like, check that box. Like we know how to convey that to, to members and give them like a good martial arts experience. Um, there was all the other operations and like somewhat dry things that, you know, if imagine you're like a, a jujitsu black belt or whatever, and you want to open your own academy. Like there's a lot you have to understand about business. It's not just teaching a class, right? Like it's, it's, it, it's, yeah. I mean, there's, it, probably for you too like that may seem like a, a normal statement but a lot of people don't think about that um anyways so we had to we we kind of busted our ass on 2018 2019 to sort all that out but we but we did it you know i always tell people who are kind of thinking about opening their own academy that it's like if you're willing to make a lot of little small mistakes and fix them it it, it prevents the big mistakes small mistakes and adjustments prevent big massive catastrophic mistakes so just always pay attention be honest when you're doing something wrong and then how to make a quick pivot to fix it so you don't keep doing the same thing over and over again wrong right anyways um one thing we were always really good at, i think think we're still good at, we're good at selling the business that was like getting memberships was um something we were we were quite capable at 
Um, but we got to a point where, Matt, did you go to our first location? It was basically like a third floor attic. Yeah, you know, I think I missed the first district location. Of course, I know Nova I MMA. I and then, yeah, I saw some pictures. The one that I, the location that, that I was out with Kamal is a great spot. Mm-hmm. Really nice um, spot right in uh, the prime optimal area of Arlington. You know, like you said, I live there, and and that's such a cool town. You know, right adjacent to to DC. Yeah, so I missed the the growing pains you might have had with that with that first location, but I knew that you guys had the gym for a while, uh, and the spot that I saw was was awesome. Yeah, that's our current location in Boston. Like you said, it's it's a prime real estate, man. You you couldn't pick a better spot. Um, but our first location was not. Not that. It was in a good area. The unit itself is a little bit difficult to find. However, despite that, actually to, to add some, some color to it, it was like on the third floor of an office building. We were located above a dentist. This poor dentist. Could you imagine like trying to do a oh, room? Like, you're like, <laughs> you're just the people getting smashed. We broke multiple walls. We had to rebuild walls because, I mean, picture Kamal and like some tuna powder just smashing into a wall, which is like what <laughs> yeah. I do. Like, that's part of the – that's just part of the game, right? Um, the oh, yeah. Our neighbor – our poor neighbor was this nice, actually a, a quite attractive Persian lady who was trying to run like a med spa, so think like therapeutic diet, <laughs> like, you know, a, a bubbling brook soundtrack in the background while she like massages someone or gives like, you know, a lady a facial and like we're just blasting music and it, this poor woman. Um, but we eventually moved out because we couldn't fit any more people in it. It was, it was small – it was awkwardly, awkwardly located, and uh, we just outgrown it. So that moved us into Boston, uh, where you where you checked out the academy, Matt. And oh, that yeah. was in 2020, dude. That was like – we literally moved in February 15th, 2020. Had a big grand opening. It was a great grand opening party. A lot of people were coming through, tons of leads, and then COVID came around the corner. Um, despite all that, like we've, we've seen a lot of growth. So we have a great team. I think that's that's why that's – Oh, yeah. Now, you guys, I, I had the opportunity uh, through Kamal to do a coaching seminar for Derek uh, Panza. He came out of there as well, right? Uh, Derek Sierra, I'm sorry. Um, Derek Sierra um, down uh, down here in Florida. He, he's like actually right on the Florida line. Uh, great guy. Uh, didn't he come out of uh, – Derek came out of uh, that district gym? He was a Nova guy. Um, he was a Nova MMA guy, but yeah, he's one of us. Yeah. Great guy, man. Now, you know, um, I wanted to, to mention to Kamal, we recently had, uh, Pat <laughs> Militich here on the show, uh, old school shooters. We had Pat on and, uh, uh, that was a great episode and Kamal and I go all the way back to, uh, CTC in Austin, Texas, man, what a fun place. Yeah. Austin was, and uh, I want Kamal to tell a, a funny story. I was actually going to try to look for the shirt. I couldn't find it. I know I have it somewhere, and wear it. When Kamal, when Kamal first met me at uh, the competitive training center, the Militich Gym in Austin, I had a shirt on, and uh, he has a funny story related to that. <laughs> yeah, so. I had uh, uh, my coach, uh, head coach, told me you have a private with this gentleman is going to take to some wrestling private from you. And I said, sure. And it was, I believe, Saturday morning. And I went to gym waiting for the, my new student to show the private wrestling to him. And I saw Matt was so jacked. And he wear a shirt, white shirt. I'm gonna excuse, what say, Matt? Excuse it said, hollow? It said, uh, I, will, I will stretch you and make you holler. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, remember that suplex? We, we were just, just, you know, you're just playing around in the ring. Remember, I did that, that suplex, that belly to back suplex, and yeah. you had a fight coming up? <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, I saw teaching, and then we went to the ring, and then he said, I tried to teach him suplex, but I said, Matt, you're not going to do it, okay? Just this is the form. And Matt, he 
hold me, did this suplex, almost break my neck. <laughs> uh, those were good times, man. Austin was so much fun, man, back then. And, you know, it's so funny because I was just talking to this girl about Austin, Texas, and she's talking about – she was actually talking about Houston, and she's like um, – she came here to Florida, and she goes, it's so cold there. And I said, no, it's not. When we were in Austin, it was beautiful in the winter and warm. And I guess in the last few years, that part of Texas from Austin down to San Antonio and Houston has been getting snow and cold. It's weird. So um, we got out of there at the right time. But, man, that was a blast. That was such a cool place. And it's such a fun town, man. Especially that time. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. Smaller, nice. Yeah. I have a lot yeah. of good stories from Austin, Texas. Yeah, you know, you know, another guy that's coming on next Saturday, Kamal, is uh, Neil Melanson. Remember, Neil? Remember I had moved you to Neil's place in, in uh, uh, Vegas for a while? He's a great guy, too. What, give your thoughts on, uh, on training with Neil. Uh, he's one of the deepest. I really, I learned a lot from Neil, and he's one of the deepest grapplers. Neil Melanson, he's, he's a legend. Yes, I trained with him, and he helped me a lot in Vegas. Yeah, I trained with him almost six months. Randy Couture, and you know, just to just to talk about how skilled Kamal is um, as a quite such a great coach, but also international wrestler. Uh, that Randy Couture himself, uh, back at that time, had Kamal put on a seminar for uh, the Extreme Couture guys. This is going way back to probably 14, 15 years ago. Remember that? Remember yes. that, Kamal? Yes, I do. So uh, Ran Randy, uh, he's uh, great. I learned a lot from him and always me and him, we used to practice wrestling. And all of his seminar, he called me and helped out his seminar. He made, I had the seminar for everybody. So yeah, so... We did a lot of practice with Randy Couture. Great times. You know, I'd like uh, to jump in for a second and ask a question that the, the fans are, are no doubt uh, going to expect me to ask, and that's uh, with respect to uh, Kamal to Khabib, who's considered to be widely considered to be the best pound per pound fighter in the world. And your match uh, against him in the UFC was I just watched it again recently and was blown away. The fight had it all. It was the most competitive match, I think, of Khabib's career. Can you take us through that fight, please? Yes. Uh, uh, I Khabib is uh, my fight. I had an amazing experience. Uh, he really surprised me. The strain, the technique, the speed he has. Uh, in beginning of the, it was his first fight. I really underestimated him. I thought my wrestling going to be better than him. And he surprised me, and he's so strong and so focused. And before the fight, he came, shake my hand, and then I look at his eyes, and I saw he's very disciplined and he's a good fighter. So, you know, as a fighter, we know, when you look at your opponent's eyes, you know he's, the, he's not bullshitting, he's the real fighter. And I told my coaches, he's good, we're going to be in trouble. So, yeah, we had a good match, and I did a few mistakes, and he then let it go. He really a uh, good fighter, and if you mistake, he don't let you go, and he finish. That's the good things about Khabib, and he was young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great fight, man. I would encourage everybody. It's on YouTube. It's got it's got 24 million views on YouTube, and rightfully so. It's the most competitive fight that Khabib ever had in his in his career, and he's considered by most to be the goat, as they say now, the greatest of all time, and. Uh, Man, that one was – that fight was amazing. Matt, you came that fight as well, correct? You came to Nashville. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I had the, the absolute pleasure of, of managing Kamal throughout a good portion of his career. And, and, uh, on, and we were in Canada. Kamal and I were in Canada at one point, Edmonton, Alberta, WEC, right? 
Yeah. Uh, I remember I had a problem at the airport getting up there, not not with with customs or anything, but as far as a snowstorm. And it, wasn't that the Jamie Varner? Was that the Jamie Varner fight, Kamal? Yeah, that was the Jamie Varner fight. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the Jamie Varner fight because that was that draw. That draw was a was another epic fight. And you know, one thing I wanted to ask you, Kamal, was WEC man. I mean, WEC was such a cool promotion. And do you think it was it was kind of bad for the sport when UFC ate everybody up? Well, uh, I I love WEC. It was very good. A show and so many people they like it, so many excitement. But of course, uh, Zufa they know business wise what's the best for them. They made the come to the combine to UFC. But of course, many people they say wish they WC stay like a pride. Pride could have stayed, so it was a good show. And WC is one of those too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we've got a guest coming on um, right after you guys that you guys know uh, and that Kamal and I met together years ago. John Shattuck is coming on um, OSS on OSS on old school shooters um, next. And uh, and that kind of brings me to this point. Kamal and Scott, both outstanding coaches. And we developed the SICS system, you know, with Kamal was a mission wrestling based system. And I've got to tell you, you know, it's been my honor to do so many coaching clinics over the years with Kamal. And, and uh, John Shattuck was really one of our first going back 16 years. And um, uh, we're really looking forward to having him on the show, but we know a lot of folks that listen to this show uh, are involved in MMA and have schools or have academies. And we'd love to come in and do coaching seminars for you guys. If you, if you want to reach out to Jack or I or Kamal. Sure. Kamal, I wanted to ask you a, a question with respect to your experiences in professional wrestling. The Hannibal TV is, is largely a, a platform dedicated to pro wrestling, uh, mostly of the, uh, the classic vintage, but I've, I've read some of your, the interviews that you've done where you've discussed training, et cetera, and some of the differences, if you'd briefly elaborate on that, I think the fans would be interested. Yes. Yeah, I was there. Let me say before I toss it to Kamal, um, I brought, I brought Kamal into pro wrestling and I brought him to uh, double cross way back in the day um, with uh, amp Dominic. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I trained, uh, Matt introduced me to pro wrestling and I start practice and I tried to get into do some pro wrestling and I loved it, it was fun. But looks so simple, but it's harder than real wrestling, harder than fighting because you have to give your body, trust the person, lift you, throw you 10 feet, five feet in the air, and uh, more technical than what you think. And I find that very interesting. And I find out so many techniques in moves. But I didn't, I didn't follow the rest of my career. So I moved to focus on mixed martial arts gym, different business access. Yeah, and there's a great video that you can find on YouTube that uh, Amp Dominic put together of Kamal training there at uh, Double Cross. And man, those guys are really technical, like Kamal said. And they were so impressed with you, Kamal, during our during our training. Yeah, uh, that Dominic, that guy has a long hair, correct? Yeah, that was the long hair dude. He yeah, was my, my tag team partner. Yeah, yeah, I trained and I really, I enjoyed. I wish I could have done more, but yeah. yeah, you know, and when Kamal did pro wrestling, he got a shout out, a really nice video shout out from a man that we all know, Kozlo Baziri, the Iron Sheik. Yeah, the Iron Sheik did a nice video on Kamal where he said uh, how uh, how excited he was that his fellow Iranian uh, freestyle international wrestling team member was um was getting into the wild and wacky world of professional wrestling 
<laughs> yes. So on the the show, uh, as the name implies, old school is is a topic that we ask all of our our guests. So, Scott, to start with you, if you could uh, delineate what old school, the mindset, being old school means to you, that would be great. <clears throat> yeah, um, Jack, I think my answer to that is having like a devotion and an appreciation for the process and the work. I'm going to integrate this to like training and being in the gym. Um, where I first started training in Lexington, Kentucky, 2005, is a gym called Four Seasons Mixed Martial Arts, or Carlson Gracie Senior Affiliate. Um, this was a bit of a like, I hope this doesn't sound bad, but it was like, it, there was like a, a, a kind of a, old school rusty like you 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 would you might get hepatitis from like a barbell somewhere if it like cut into your skin um but like think like rusty rough around the edges kind of just grunge like gym where dudes were just in there busting their ass working not talking a lot of shit well talking a lot of shit but like not going out and boasting a lot just quiet stoic get in there do your work <clears throat> so that's kind of what old school means to me like appreciating the process, like living the actual uh, lifestyle of, of martial arts and training, being around people like you guys who all kind of have similar cultures. It's like a, what would you say? Like a, a camaraderie to it. Excellent. Kamal, same question for you, sir. Oh, <clears throat> man, so much respect, so much discipline, lots of knowledge and carry on long long time you because we learn from our past and all the school mean those guys are have best they seem more they train more they have more respect they have more technique how can i say more respect and old school mean respect more respect <laughs> They have something to share, some some wisdom to uh, to, to bring. Yeah, you know when, when Kamal when Kamal was coaching with me and training me, and tra and we were training others together. He had a great quote from his father, uh, Kamal. Do you remember that quote? And Kamal was is in, and I've and as a coach myself, I've always Kamal was the coach that taught me how. Don't move on to another technique until people know that first technique. And Eric Paulson's a great coach, but he teaches everything so fast, so quick. When I trained with Eric, I didn't retain as much. With Kamal, you retain everything. And that quote from his father was something like this. Uh, Fear the man not that has done uh, a thousand holds, but fear the man that has trained one hold a thousand times. Is, is that about right, Kamal? Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's old school. That's very old school. Well, gentlemen, uh, we've come to the end of our uh, brief, uh, all too brief allotted time frame this morning. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Scott and Kamal for, for coming on and hopefully we can uh, do this again in the future because I feel like we've only scratched the surface here. Let's Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys. And I just want to, and I just want to close with a little song that kind of typifies this and, 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 you know, we are silver sages spreading knowledge to the younger ages. And, and when Kamal first met me, my hair was all black. So you could see I've gone quite silver over the years. And that song is from the chairman of the board. I've been to town, been up the boulevard, been down the beach, and I've learned some things that only time can teach. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.